Uh, you have already heard about the details of our speakers this evening. Uh, Adur, whom I call Adur Anna, yeah, uh, he's elder to me. Anna is elder brother. So Adur Anna, it's nice to have you here after April uh, last year when you had come and given the annual lecture of the Kalpanijar Foundation. Uh, I would like to start off with you. Abhinak, I'll come to you later. I would like to ask you, Adur, you see, when you started making films, and your first film was Swayamvaram, uh, which also won a lot of awards, and you were prior to that also at the Film and Television Institute of India. Film Institute. Yeah, Film Institute, as it was called those days. Uh, in 1965, where probably there was more exposure to Ritik Ghatak. So my question first to you is, when was your first exposure to the films of Mrinal Sen, A, and B, to the person Mrinal Sen, and how did it happen? Thank you, Raman. Uh, actually, I keep to know about uh, Manalda. Uh, I think the one you have to go up a little bit. Uh, no, I, yeah. uh, they, they will increase it too much. Uh -huh. It will be insufferable. I, I can keep it closer. No, I, I, I came to know Manalda long before I saw any of his films. This was in 67-68 uh, time. In Bombay, uh, I had passed out of the institute and I was running a film society in Trivandrum and then trying to uh, encourage others from societies all over the state in the Kerala. That was the time when there was a very active film society functioning in Bombay called Film Forum. This was run by two uh, gentlemen. One was Basu Chatterjee and the other was uh, Arun Kaul. Uh, a lot of, lot many uh, leaders of the film industry in Bombay were there, you know, you know, as uh, members of the board of Film Forum, and it's a very active society. In, it was very important to be a member of Film Forum. Film Forum, uh, it was the way you know, some of the film societies used to work in Calcutta, you know, mm -hmm. uh, big one. And uh, that was the time when uh, this man, Aaron Cowell, he was writing, uh, I, I, I still do not know uh, exactly, but then he was a script writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> he had, that was the time when Film Finance Corporation of that time, not Film Development Corporation. Film Finance Corporation was giving loans to make films. And uh, <clears throat> B.K. Karinja happened to be the chairman at that time. That was the golden period of the Film Finance Corporation. Karanja was such a remarkable person with great foresight. He knew film, uh, film people. He had uh, a genuine interest in cinema. And he had a very, very, very modern outlook. He was the chairperson. That was the time when Arun Kaul wanted to produce a film with Bernalda as the director. And the... Uh, uh, no, no, I used to meet both uh, Basu Chatterjee and Arun Gaul very frequently in Bombay. And Arun Gaul at that time was staying in a lodge in uh, Bandra. Mm -hmm. And Manarda used to come to see him. Very often they used to have meetings there. And then I was also one of the three people meeting there. So that is the time when I met Manarda for the first time. I heard about him. I knew about his films as a film student, I, I, I could not but be aware of what he did, but then I had not seen the films. At that time, particularly in the Film Institute, only two people uh, from Calcutta, uh, no, from Bengal, West Bengal, uh, came to be known. That was Ray and Khatak. Uh, Sadhguru Ray never bothered to visit uh, Institute at that time, whereas Khatak became our uh, professor of direction and also the vice principal. So we are, we are very close to the cinema of Urte Katak. 
and always the discussion and everything was between the two of them munar da was, uh, was they all although they all started together almost together making films you know uh, in, in 51 the earliest film was made by katak i think in 1952 uh, and then it was not noticed at all and then uh, in 55 both banarda uh, and satyendra made their film 54 or 55 and it so happened that ray got immediate attention and approbation everywhere so he was simply got established with just one film you know his uh, first film whereas banarda kept on struggling in the sense for attention uh, this uh, arad bore uh, did not uh, uh, did not came to be noticed at all and then uh, the next film by shesh ravan that was that people took note of uh, and then there was also this nilash akash nilakash niche nilakash yeah. niche and that also happened to be known because of its banning you know the chinese character being a Uh, the lead character in that film so all these things we knew about him at that time but that not him or nor his film so uh, so he had to find a finance you know, that's how it was and so happened this film uh, you know got a sanction uh, for the uh, loan this was a loan that was bhuvan show bhuvan show yeah and bhuvan show marked really marked the beginning of manal das illustrious career i must say because from that time onwards it was like uh, he was waiting for this kind of recognition got the national award and several of the national awards that year and then it, you know, followed a, a number of films and it also coincided with an outstanding uh, distributor from the west cactus films taking up his uh, you know films you know to, to be sh- uh, you know, showcased in the big festivals biggest festivals all over europe everywhere so banal the made real great films at that time and then they all got recognized so that's how he came to be notice of the world but but when did you get to see his films first you met the man first okay yes yes uh, uh, and how did he come across to you as a person when you first met him without even knowing his films you know even even without seeing uh, any film mm. i knew him because i knew him as a as a, uh, a meritorious uh, filmmaker no doubt yeah but later i i caught up with what i had not been able to catch up was bhuvan chom the first film that you saw i think so yeah i think so i don't really remember mm-hmm. I, I, it must be the first film all right then, then i then i follow all, all the other films mm-hmm. one after the other and his body of work is so large you know it, you know that, that it happened to be like race you know 27 feature films it's not a small number right <laughs> so especially when you compare with it, it with yourself yes you give a lot of space between making films yeah i don't give it it happens <laughs> it happens, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> okay <laughs> right <laughs> okay um let's go to mainak for a little while mainak um uh you came into the scene much later you know and uh, as a researcher person who studies cinema and um, have delved deep into the works of not only uh, our bengali filmmakers but also national and international filmmakers uh, how was your exposure to mrinal sen or his films and how it came about yeah. well you know i grew up in a family where of course we were kind of taken to watch these films my father was a friend of his uh, and uh, it was kind of you know when, when there was a mrinal sen film showing uh sometimes even though we were very young we were kind of taken along so i remember the first what i remember very clearly is watching calcutta 71 mm-hmm. at the metro cinema uh in dharamtala but the very event of uh, the screening of calcutta 71 was uh, quite an important event because you know that, that there are all sorts of uh, stories kind of associated with it and incidents events one of them is that a number of political activists especially nationalist activists their family members and friends uh used to come and watch uh, the film because sen used primarily because sen used a lot of footage that he had been shooting on the streets 
uh, of demonstrations, processions, and so on, political uh, events. So, um, you know, sometimes people would come and just try to find out a face in the crowd, in the procession, who is no longer there, you know, picked up by the police, uh, maybe killed even. So this was one of the things that I still remember that was, was talked about a lot. And Ashish Ayadaksha, who is today present in the audience, has written recently very eloquently and very, very interestingly about that particular kind of moment when uh, what he says is, uh, it actually resonates with a whole lot of practices. Actually, Sen was one of those artists who was trying to almost kind of, you know, go beyond the frame and kind of, you know, go and walk, uh, you know, with the procession. It's going to come, sort of spilling over, as if the film is spilling over the screen into the streets. Mm -hmm. So that is the first impression that from the 1970s, even though we were school kids, almost all of us would retain about his films. We saw the earlier film much later. So Calcutta 71, Interview, before that. The Calcutta Trilogy, Calcutta as it was called, yeah. Chorus, then I saw Mrigoya and other, and yeah. Uh, right, uh, you have also watched the Calcutta Trilogy. Yeah, so um, what do you think about the Calcutta Trilogy uh, which was made in the 70s at that time in a situation uh, which was very turbulent in those days. Uh, there have been comments by some people that, you know, in those kind of films, uh, it was too much of like a, a poster-like propaganda and things like that, you know. W what was your perception? Actually, uh, both Ray and Sen, both of them made films on Calcutta. Yeah. And while the subject is the same, their films have been absolutely different from each other. Mm -hmm. So that shows uh, the, the approach of the filmmaker, his individual uh, vision and all that. It can, there can be same subject remaining the same. There can be films made absolutely different from the original uh, inspiration. You know, or maybe, you know, you know the, the way you look at it, you know, it, it's, it's angle of vision, your interpretation, you know, this, this thing can happen. This is what happened in the, both the filmmakers' works. Uh, Mainak, do you think you said that, you know, who we went out of the frame and uh, used to walk the streets along with the demonstrators and so on. So, you think he was part of the process at that time or was very much part of the milieu that he was talking about? Yes, very much so. Actually, I was reading, uh, uh, just, you know, after his passing, I was reading some of his earliest essays and books. There's this essay written in 1976 called Bhut Bhutpartaman Bhut The Past, Present and Future, where he gives a very interesting narrative. He says, 1949, and writes it very dramatically. 1949, when he had not made a film, it was 55 when he made it at uh, the, you know, the Tebhaga struggle was happening, and in the South 24 Parganas, Kakdip Ahulla, that famous martyr, was killed by the police, the woman. So they, they said that we were all so excited, disturbed, and so kind of, you know, uh, we thought that something has to be done. We got hold of a 16 millimeter camera somehow. And we also wrote a script called The Struggle for the Land. It's called Jomei Lorai. Mm. The film finally did not happen. Then he says, 10 years later, 59, I'm shooting Baisha Strabun in a village in Bordhaman. But then the news came from Calcutta, the hunger marchers are on the street. People were coming from the village asking for food. Huge hunger marches happening in Calcutta. 69, I was making, he says I'm making Bhuvan Shom. But one could sense that Nakshal Bari is happening. The whole scenario is going to change. I will not make a Bhuvan Shom after that. Mm. So it's, it's a kind of, by his own account and by any other account, I suppose, there's a, this, this kind of, you know, this kind of constantly a backdrop of of political agitation, uh, unrest, uh, hunger marches, famine. You know, hunger, for example, is there in many of his films as a theme, uh, political agitation too. So this is something that he very consciously assimilated, I think. Um, do you think, um, as a person, as we met him, was he uh, an overtly political person? He never joined any political party. 
he, 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 his humanity was uh, very, very, very dear to me. That's what attracted me most. Even while he was a sympathizer with the left, he joined a big procession in Calcutta in protest against that uh, killing of people in Nandigram. Yeah, well, for no, him the no, cause no, was no, more no, important. No, yeah. Very many people were shocked because he was well known and he, he had all his friends in the ministry, including the chief minister and others. But all the same, for him, the cause was important for him. The humanity was more important than even the ideology. You know, that, that he was the man like that. that what, that's what really attracted me. He had a very high integrity, very high integrity. You know, you know, he did not care for, uh, and also he was a rebel within. A, a real rebel, a real, I would even call him a revolutionary because he was always at variance with the status quo. He questioned the, the, the things. You know, and if he, if he covered the procession, he was showing the, the protest march and things like that. That is because he, he, he is, uh, he believes in what he is showing. He believes in the cause of those people. So he represented really the, the masses. That's what happened. Um, Mahinaki always used to say that he was eternally uh, chasing the truth. But that, you know, he would never pocket the truth. He would continue to chase it. Uh, to what extent do you think that this was reflected in his films? That's a, that's a difficult question. but. And just let me uh, let me kind of go back to my first uh, comment and say that I was not saying he walked the streets. I said that his films almost looked like they were spilling over the frame, like uh, joining something outside the you know, outside the screen, outside the theatre. That was the spirit that I was talking about, not about what he was doing personally, as, but that was also important. See, what is in, maybe I can address this question slightly indirectly and say that. It is a kind of search is definitely reflected in the way it changed its style. You know, from Bhuvan Shom, of course, you see a marked shift in style, a kind of hybrid mixed form where he uses texts, animation, theater. He uses a lot of theater. That's the very interesting thing that he does, uh, you know, in Chorus, in Brigaya, in even Calcutta 71. If you, look, if you think of the very first uh, sequence of Calcutta 71, the mock trial, uh, which is not seen in the DVDs that, that circulate today. Uh, so this is something that, so all of all this kind of, a kind of uh, readiness to change uh, his form, to incorporate all sorts of things that may not, you know, on the face of it belong to proper cinematic kind of uh, uh, language. He was never afraid to draw upon all sorts of completely hybrid, mixed, heterogeneous elements. Right. Uh, Mayanak just mentioned uh, uh, that there is a lot of uh, element of theatre in Rinal Sen's film. Uh, you have had a theatre background too yourself before you jumped into films. Uh, did you also find like him that there are a lot of theatrical elements and do you think that his early connection with the IPTA and like-minded people from theatre has had some kind of an impact on this kind of theater language uh, getting into his films in some form or the other. Because even a lot of characters he has taken in his subsequent films are from theater. One of them was supposed to be here today, he's absent here, Anjan, but. No, it's possible, you know, you, it's not transplanting theater into cinema, no, not at all. No, no it is the spirit of the theater. The, the, theater has a particular force, you know, he used it not in terms of speech or anything, but then that was the inner strength of it. You know, that's, if you see Katak's films, it is the same. Mm. I, he was again, uh, you know, he was more committed uh, 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 revolutionary <laughs> than, than uh, even, even uh, Manalda. So even Communist Party could not contain him, you know. That was the kind of character Katak was. But then Manalda was not like that. Manalda believed in the, in, in, in the ideology. But he, he did not, you know, he did not, you know, kind of fight with the system, within the system. But then he he did, uh, you know, champion the cause that he believed in, and then he, he believed in in, in everything else. 
he kept the it is humanity for him uh, moinak you said about the kind of changes that occurred in this film subsequently um, now later on you know there were some global concerns which were also coming into his films you know like uh, uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall and things like that. Uh, so, do you think that, you know, this concern for humanity of his was not restricted to geographical boundaries, but also to the world at large? Yes, of course, it comes from, uh, Adur just mentioned, or you, you, also, you mentioned, sorry, the IPTA and all of it. It comes from that kind of background. If you look at the 40s, kind of, you know, the churning in the, in the, in the uh, arts, the left cultural movement that we loosely call IPTA, but there are many other organizations there. Uh, he is certainly a product of that, and the one central thing about them is this internationalism. Mm -hmm. So they are immediately, they were trying to re uh, respond to what was happening in Spain, what was happening in, with the you know, Soviet Union, the Spanish Civil War, the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union, all of the, those things sort of, you know, found an immediate kind of response in, in the 40s kind of radical arts. And Rinal Senan was a product of that, direct kind of product of that. So it was only normal. But interestingly, between the Calcutta trilogy kind of political cinema and what you call the global concerns of Mahaprithi B, mm -hmm. uh, films like that, there was this period when Ekdin Achanak, Ekdin Pratidin, these films also took place, huh? where he was trying to go Towards the, towards the home, the family, the interior, the individual. Yeah, the individual, and he was portraying situations uh, and how people would react, different kinds of people would react in a particular situation. Like in the Akdin Protidin, if a uh, uh, lady of the house does not come back at night, you know, what is it that the other people go through, you see? And he always used to say that wherever he showed this film, uh, there was this common question of what happened to the girl, where did she go? Yeah, uh, you have never shown that. And he used to always reply saying that was not the issue of my film, that was not the topic of my film. My film was dwelling on a situation, if somebody is absent, away, what goes on among the rest of the people. And what she did and where she went is left to the interpretation of the audience. Yeah, and. That is precisely what he did in films like uh, Agdin Protidin or Ekdin Achanak and so on. So that was certainly a phase uh, before which he uh, went on to global concerns also. Uh, have you had the chance to uh, interact with him on his films? Uh? Yes, I, I of course got more than one uh, sort of uh, chance to talk to him, but never very really seriously about his films because he treated me as some sort of Kid, uh, Kid fr yeah. a friend's son. Or friend's something. son. And then when, we, when, I, when one grew up, he was uh, a bit wary of the department of uh, film studies at Jadapur. He thought that it was kind of, you know, creating a whole lot of, lot of mambo jumbo about cinema. That it uh, was very esoteric. Esoteric. Yeah. But we could not convince him that that was not the case. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did he watch your Sthaniya Shambhad? And did you have a chance to talk to him about it? By that time, he was not watching watching films. He was not watching no, films? No, not no. much. Okay. He was not leaving home or anything, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let me come back to you. Uh, you have watched all the works of Mrinal Sen or? Maybe I've missed some. Yeah. Yes. Not all. I don't think all the films. For instance, uh, uh, Amara, what, uh, last film that he made. I, I Amara don't, Bhuvan. Uh, mm. I don't think it is released. Was it released? Yeah, yeah it was. It, it was released. I have yeah. not seen that film. Okay. Okay. Now, I just wanted to ask you, mm. uh, from whatever you have seen, mm. uh, what are the three characteristics that you would say stand out uh, with Mrinal Sen as a filmmaker, which would be different from, say, other filmmakers from this yes. part of the country that you've seen? Yes. Actually, I, uh, my favorite film is Ekdin uh, Pradidin. Mm. And that's one film where he says everything without saying anything. Mm -hmm. now, th this, is, this film stands out, in fact. Even in Indian cinema, it stands out as a great example of uh, this man's genius, this uh, filmmaker's genius. And 
next to that is only kharij uh, and uh, and the third comes the ek din yeah you very uh, nicely put it and you say that you know he says a lot and says everything without saying uh, anything really yeah anything, no. uh, really anything uh, but that and what is important about the film is that everybody who sees the film wonders what happened to her mm. where was she she of course comes back and she quietly walks in and you know she doesn't she is surprised that they have not gone to sleep you know it's so late and you know, all that but she doesn't say anything and none of them of the family members ask her where were you why are you so late no such questions it's all understood it's all understood what made the difference was that she for one day she did not come on time usual time you know this was, this is this is a remarkable film so don't you think this was also a marked departure yes from from the stories of the, the 70s storytelling like no for even mm. from, from his films of the 70s yes. like calcutta 71 yes. padatik yes. yes. uh, yes. and chorus yes. uh, or even interview yes and and uh, where he was pretty loud these films were pretty loud yes. Yes. and a lot of very yes. verbose so you think it's a marked he, departure he, 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 it's a marked departure and uh, here also no you see typical manners and uh, strokes are there where you it, there is a, he works on the alienation also you know not just telling you a, a, a story very nicely but then you alienate you know the the uh, you know the audience with some element of somebody talking directly into the camera you know all that all that is there in the, in the film is is very what do you call you know frolicky you know frolicky okay. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and the the sense of humor in his films again yeah it's another great element you know that you don't see uh, in many others like it's a different uh, kind of sense of humor yes you know the the you know the humor that he evokes is sarcasm a comment on the on the situation or so many things like core uh, in the chorus mm -hmm. because that year i was chairing the jury uh you know chorus was given the national best award you know right uh, and uh, there is a th was that also in chorus as far as the jury was concerned jury was in chorus or in chorus yes. yeah okay yes. <laughs> we had problems but then we we were finally into chorus and then <clears throat> uh in that film it starts with uh, uh, people applying for a job i think it is in chorus is it interview where he, the the is it not in chorus that the um the 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 uh, the company owner you know the proprietor of the company he says we cannot give jobs to everyone all so do one thing give an application form to everyone <laughs> <laughs> you give them an application form let them all apply <laughs> okay we will uh, also go and take a few questions from the audience because uh, uh, right at the beginning there were two warnings i was given by the organizers here one is the announcement i heard if you want to go to the session at the graveyard take your passes from the east gate uh, that sounded very nice if you want to pass to the graveyard please go and collect it from the east gate and the other thing i was told was this session has to be wound up by 6:30 reason the photographers will have to be on the launch uh where there is another session after this you see uh so 6:30 is the outside limit that we have been given 10 minutes yeah yeah so uh, uh before we go to the audience moinak and adurana one last comment you would like to make before we take questions from the audience any any comment any any pertaining to mrinal sir of course i again i am particularly i was i have been enamored of his humor and that scene i don't i hope it is i think it was in mirgaya when this man this tribal is being tried in the court and and everybody is talking in english and then the tribal who is the who is the culprit and who you know there is a very heated argument going between the uh, the the, um, uh, the the councils he they argue for his being his crime being very hideous and he should be hanged or something yeah. that was the time when suddenly you know the, the, there is a noise about the, the the fan the electric fan slowly you know with a big noise you know it it grinds to a halt 
and everybody looks up in the court, including the, the, the judge. Judge is the one who would really feels suffocated in that heat and uh, humidity because he is overdressed, you know, with tie and all that. So, so everybody looks at that. Finally, this man, the, uh, the culprit, you know, who is being, uh, is, is what do you call it? He is also looking up at the fan. So it, it comments, you know, it's such a great comment on yeah. the situation of electricity, the situation of the present day situation of uh, Calcutta. So many things in just one shot and one sequence. Yeah. And it, it's uh, also a very indirect comment on, you know, the, somebody who is being tried. And he doesn't even know that <laughs> it, 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 it's com coming to a conclusion where he will be sentenced to, you know, hanging or something. Yeah. You know, such a grave situation has been made into something absolutely… The fan coming to a grinding halt. Grinding halt. Yeah. Uh, right. It's <laughs> yeah, that's actually uh, wonderful but that that's, you mentioned that's typical that. typical Mrinal Sen. Yeah, that's typical Mrinal Sen long before the times yes. when nowadays uh, if you see courtroom sequences in advertisements on yes. television, uh, the modern version is always kiska baja, yeah? That's the kind of things that you have in courtrooms nowadays when the mobile rings, you see? Yes. There's kiska baja. Uh, th this kind of thing which you said, you know, uh, his way of indirectly poking at something, you yes, know? Yes, yes. Or this satire which comes out in a manner where you don't know what has hit you, you yes. see? is also true because I knew him very well and had the occasion to meet him on several occasions. Uh, about 30 years ago, he told me one thing point blank. He told me, Raju, listen, do you know why all these people want you? And they are all calling you to be part of this and part of that. I said, why, Rinalda? He said, because your English is good. <laughs> Theirs is not. <laughs> and in that, I saw an indirect criticism of English being abolished at the primary level here by the previous government at that time. So there was a tinge of sarcasm over there that, you know, they thought that, you know, English and now they are, look at them, you see, they uh, don't know English, these present people. And because you know English, you know, you're in demand. Yes. Yeah. And, and later on, I reflected on it, how true it was. It was very, very true because we are brought up in a kind of society where you equate a knowledge of English with education or <laughs> knowledge and wisdom, which is very, very wrong. And this kind of irony I saw in that statement of his, and I have often thought back on that statement and uh, always thought, okay, stay on the ground level. You know, you're not as important yes. as you make it out to be, okay? One more instance I would like yeah. to… Yeah, please. There's one, uh, there is the set who is very kind and he is feeding uh, the ants, you know. He throws, he asks his servant to throw uh, sugar all around the, the meadow. And he just walks in, you know. He has been so kind to these uh, ants and then respectively he just walks in. As he walks in, the, the ants bite him. And suddenly he gets angry. They call the servant, he said, bring kerosene. Throw it you know, here and then set fire. <laughs> <laughs> right. One last thing from you. We don't have any time. And That's all right. If you do have something to make, you do. Uh, don't don't think about that. We'll spill over a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. But one thing I wanted to uh, mention. You see, we, we have discussed a lot of his films, but one of the films which impressed me very much was a 20-minute film he made on Calcutta, uh, which he called Calcutta, My El Dorado. I haven't yeah? seen that. Yeah, I, I, I've seen it uh, time and time again and I've even used it for my students uh, uh, wherever I teach. And that film starts in a remarkable way with uh, one of these uh, Dharamtala Ka Mela people, you know, way up, you know, holding up a boy against the pole and that also incidentally is a theatre character, Neil Kanto Shengupto. And Laka, kya dekh raha hai? Kya ho raha hai niche? Pani pani bai raha hai? Pura Kalkata goob raha hai? and so on. And in a cyclic order, the film ends also by saying, Abhi kya dek raha hai? Same sequence, yeah? It says, Nahi, paani nikal gaya hai. Sab army idhar udhar apne kaam mein ja rahe hai. Sab theek hai. And the uh, kind of uh, scroll that comes there is, 
Calcutta can never die. Calcutta is not a dying city because at that time Rajiv Gandhi had called Calcutta a dying city. So this was put into the film over there, you see. That kind of uh, irony was there. That impressed me no end and a lot of theatrical elements in that film too. Okay, on that note, we will take uh, a few questions from there. Yes, there are hands up here. You have a microphone? Yes. Go ahead and then say who you are addressing your question to. Give your name at the beginning. My please. name is Shubankar. My question is for Moinagda. So Mrinal Sen made one film in Odia, Motira Monisha, and one, Motira film, Monisha. And one film in Telugu, I think, or Loka, Loka Urikata, Urikata, yeah. which Shotojit Rai apparently liked very much. So I want Moinagda to talk a little bit about the linguistic pluralism of Mrinal Sen and also, even, add, also even, add to that, you know, the film he did, uh, the Bhavan show in, in, Mara, in, 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 in Hindi, he did Bhavan show. In, yeah. in, and, and Mrigoya in, in yeah. Hindi as well. So the linguistic pluralism we have lost, even Gautam Ghosh's feature directorial debut, who is the next generation after him, was in Telugu, Mahabhumi. So it's something perhaps we have now lost. So if you, yeah, yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that because I was looking for an opportunity to, to you know, mention that aspect of his work. It's really kind of remarkable because if you look at the, even the very early period, he actually started with, I think, Ek Aduri Kahani. Uh, and uh, then sort of made all these other films in Hindi, Matira Manisha also in the 60s. And actually, if you ask me, the mo my most favorite Minalsan films are not in Bengali. I mean, if you leave out Podatik, I mean, this is just a personal kind of uh, list that I'm making. It's Okauri Kotha, it's uh, Ekaduri Kahani, which I saw a long time back, but still remember. Um, that, that linguistic pluralism actually needed a bit of courage because you are leaving your own space. You are going out and shooting in a different location. Very interestingly, Okauri Kotha was shot in Telangana. And it's, uh, if Minal Sen goes to Telangana, you may... Actually, it's not only because the story is from that location, but also because he wanted to shoot something in Telangana. He wanted to shoot, uh, uh, make films on Kalindichar and Panigrai's. Uh, so it's an interest, not only in the other languages and lo locations and people, also interest in their local literature. He was deeply interested in Prem Chand, in Panik's, you know, ba Bhagwati Charan and Kalindichar and Panigrai. He was very much interested in that, uh, this uh, sort of, you know, what we call now vernacular kind of literature. So. Yeah, even some of his African later films like Khandahar or Genesis and so on, right? Khandahar is a Premen Mitro story. Right. The story is from here. Yeah, but then he made it. Yes. Right, there was another hand here. So, my name is Shakib. I uh, uh, just wanted to ask whether we could consider Manal Sen's movies as a best representation of existentialism and absurdity uh, of human life in, in the Indian cinema. Any of you can take it up. I, I don't think so. Don't I, I don't think so. He doesn't, he doesn't, I mean, just never says the life is absurd or anything. Life has to be lived and lived well. That's he, what he says. He believed in celebrating yes, life. Yes, celebrating it. Yeah. It's the other way. It's the other way. All right, so it is not the way that he was looking at you, no. or you no. asked the way he was no. looking at it. Any other questions? Uh, yes, please. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Shayok Ghosh. I just want to ask a funny question that uh, Minal Sen created a unique year in Indian cinema, but he gave birth to two megastars. One is Amitabh Bachchan, who is, was a debut performer in, uh, by the voiceover in Govan Show, and Mithun Chakravarti in Megaya. So, uh, is this a general phenomenon or is it a paradox? Just I want to ask. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. Yeah, please. <laughs> when all the, after that film was made, at that time, Mithun, Mithun Chakravarti, Mithun Chakravarti. Uh, was a struggling uh, actor, you know, he was looking for a chance and finally he went to Bombay and, uh, and he then suddenly became popular. And the first time when Manarda, uh, you know, met him in Bombay, Madhur Chakravarti went to him and first thing he told, it was Manalda told me this. Yeah. Manalda, I have bought a car. <laughs> this is what he said. 
and he start brother started laughing telling this story you know about what is an actor looking for in life you know yeah but then that is also studio culture here in uh, calcutta uh, the people open the gate for you at the studios here depending on which car you go in you yes. see and if you go in a taxi then nobody opens the door for you <laughs> okay uh, right any other questions okay oh yeah there we see that will probably be the last one because the clock has struck 6:30 uh, my question is for mr gopala krishnan uh, see no art is divorced from politics uh, then but then uh, so many of ray's films are political you know intensely political uh, but minal sen and rithik ghatak because of their you know very overt and clearly expressed political lineage ideology they came to be known as political filmmakers so at that whereas that tag was never you know usually attached to ray i have seen your mukha mukham which is a you know such an overtly political film uh, do you think this tag of being a political filmmaker limits the director's reception or does it enrich it would you like to be known as a political filmmaker or you know does it enrich your work or limit it i i am not a political filmmaker no a political filmmaker asks questions and also answers them i have only asked questions never answered them because i i don't i'm not sure about the answers it's you know, as an artist i keep searching the my subject could be in fact even in uh, mukhamugam my subject is politics but I, my film is not political i always affirmed it no not at all and no, i not because of the not for any fear that i will be known as a political filmmaker no no it's not because of that nothing wrong in that there there, there are the, uh, filmmakers who have been uh, great political uh, no makers of great political films like the, the man who made uh, hour of the furnaces and uh, those films they were great films they were very political and nothing wrong with that but uh, just because uh, but then i i in my films you know whether i deal with politics directly or not the the, the societal changes are there in the film you know we cannot leave divorce the from politics no it's because that of, itself is politics yes. in some way yes, you know so, yes. so because it's it doesn't you see our larger understanding of political films is uh, narrowed down to party political films you see and or establishment or anti establishment films but in day to day life if we see what human beings are going through and if we are trying to uh, reflect that on the screen in some way or the other uh, that too is political in some way but not political in the sense that they are to be labeled as political films i uh, do remember and this has stuck in my head when we were studying at jadavpur university there was uh, there were a lot of unions and there was one which was the uh, naxalite union the P, which was then called pscc and there was one obijit das a short gentleman who used to give these speeches over there and in front of the indoor stadium there and said uh, আমার আশেপাশে যদি একশোটা লোক খেতে না পায় এবং আমি তাদের যে খেতে পাচ্ছে না তার জন্য যাদের খাওয়ানো উচিত তাদের বিরুদ্ধে প্রতিবাদ করি এটা যদি রাজনীতি হয় তাহলে এই রাজনীতি রাজনীতি আমরা একশো বার করবো বেশি ওটাকে যদি রাজনীতি বলা হয় ইফ ইউ কনসিডার দ্যাট পলিটিক্স দেন উই উইল অফকোর্স ইন্টালিজ ইন দ্যাট সর্ট অফ পলিটিক্স ইফ উই আর ব্রিঙ্গিং আউট হাঙ্গার স্টারভেশন অর দ্য সাফারিং অফ দ্য পিপল অ্যান্ড দেন ইউ কল দ্যাট পলিটিক্স দেন অফকোর্স উই আর Uh, proud to present that kind of politics to the people and on that note i think i would like to thank uh, adur gopal krishnan and moinak bishas for the wonderful uh, assessment of mrinal sen as a filmmaker and as a human being and thank you all also for your questions and your queries and your patient hearing and now you may collect your passes for the graveyard thank you very much thank you